Yeah, so now we will take a look at the activation function. As uh, you know, when she asked about the reason for using sigmoid function, is that the only sigma an activation function used? So what are the activation functions that are uh, that that we can use it? How many of you watched my previous batch videos? How many activation functions? Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Only three people watched my previous batch videos. Very good. Excellent. But good. Okay. Sigmoid. Sigmoid activation function. The one I have shown. The second one is ReLU, rectified linear unit. And the next one is the softmax. Next one is the tanh. And the fifth one is uh, step. Sixth one is and the parametric uh, p relu, okay, p relu, something like that, okay. And uh, seven is a leaky relu. So these are the activation functions are available. In the interview they'll ask you, can you tell me what are the activation functions are? So what is the role of activation function once? the network model totals or sums the product of each synapses weights with the corresponding with its corresponding input value it uh, applies the activation function depends on the use case you need to uh, you need to use uh, which um, activation yeah depends on the scenario or use cases you need to choose the appropriate active function so in our case, we have used sigmoid activation function because my model has to predict the output value as either the class level, right? Either one or zero. One means they are churners, zero means they're non-churners. In that case, sigmoid activation function is more than sufficient. It, it Even though your input layer also, right, if that produces the values anywhere above one or, you know, less than zero, it squashes or it, comp, you know, it converts the value anywhere between zero and one, right? So in that case, sigma is more than sufficient. So the ReLU activation function, we use it in general in the hidden layer. Hidden layer, we have to use the ReLU activation function. The softmax, we need to use the output layer. And the tanh we don't use it in general, but uh, you know if you, you know step is also we don't use it that much. Okay. Anyhow, I will explain you what is relu and all. Okay, relu is uh, I will I I explained what is uh, sigmoid right? Sigmoid is nothing but the S curve. We discussed uh, the sigmoid function as part of uh, logistic regression. In the logistic regression, how do you know? In the case of linear regression model, we were fitting the straight line. But in the case of binary classification problem, we were fitting the model with S curve, right? Sorry, S curve. So we know this one. Please do one thing. Okay, I'll do it. Something like this. this is S curve. You know, this is where you are. One software, this is where your zero is there. You know, just think that way. Okay, this is where your zero is there. Zero on one. Any value, uh, if you get the sigmoid function when you apply it, it will squash the value anywhere between zero and one, which means it transforms the value between zero and one. For example, the function for z is one divided by one plus u to the power minus z. This is what we discussed as per logistic regression. So in this case, um, to predict the target. Um, label sigmoid function is more than sufficient, right? Whether uh, the person is um, going to churn or not. Okay. And um, what is the next one? Is the next one is the ReLU. ReLU is a very popular function when it comes to deep learning and even normal neural network. Okay. Uh, the rectier function, the ReLU function, it is one of the popular function in artificial. Network. It's mostly used in hidden layer. You need to remember these guys. Okay, uh, the quite beautiful question. Uh, yeah, yes, good, uh, Sandra, you asked. Okay, the, the, why should I use ReLU in, uh, in the hidden layer? See, supposing you wanted to classify the images. You know, nowadays, the face recognition is very much popular, right? You know, even in our mobile phone, uh, if you show your face, even though you have the lock in your mobile phone, 
and uh, you have additional feature like facial recognition. If you show your face to your mobile phone, it will open, it will unlock your mobile phone, right? But if you show, if, if you show, uh, if somebody else take your mobile phone, if they show their face, it will not unlock it, it right? So it accurately understands, hey, this uh, mobile phone has to be unlocked for this face. It, re it recognizes the face. It's, this is called facial recognition. Okay, recognition. Facial, you know, facial recognition is one of the um, a hot topic in deep learning, right? Okay, so in that case, facial recognition, right? Uh, images. We are training the model with images. It is unstructured data, not the structured data. Images are like pixels, right? Anywhere between 0 to 255 values will be there. So what happens is, uh, if you use, if you squash the value anywhere between zero and one, it doesn't make any sense. For example, um, the pixels values are ranging between zero to 255. Let's, you know, let's assume that 255 is white color and 253 is a black color, right? So white color, black color have a different pixel values. Okay, if you squash the value between zero and one, how your model can, uh, you know, if you show any new image, how your model can predict, right? How your model can tell whether it's a cat or human or something else. Because it needs a pixel value. So for that purpose, we use the ReLU, okay? So the challenge with ReLU is um, the negative values become zero. It simply converts all your negative values to zero. That is the problem with uh, ReLU. Okay, it simply converts them as a zero, okay? But any value above one, above one, it will remain as it is. For example, if it is a 255, it will remain, this is correct. But if it is um, anything less than zero, right, negative value, it will convert as a zero blindly. So what is the problem if that converts any negative value to zero? So in that case, what will happen is, um, it will, you know, decrease the models, your, uh, the deep learning models able to train the data properly. You are suppressing the fact, right? You are suppressing the fact. To solve this problem, they came up with something called leaky relu. So you can see at the bottom, leaky relu. So in this case, we introduce small negative slope. So it does not have a zero slope. So in this case, a relu, I'll just go back, go to the next thing, a relu. In this case, what happens? You see a zero and uh, so in this case, what happens? Um, we have something called um, yeah. Here we have something like this, right? It will be something like this. So anything zero will become anything less than zero will become a zero. In the case of relu, anything uh, you know, the anything above zero, it will remain as it is. For example, it is a two fifty five, it will remain two fifty five. Okay, it'll it'll be two fifty five. If it is going to be one one eight, it'll remain one one eight. Unlike a uh, sigmoid function, <clears throat> it will not squash the values more than one, right? Uh, between zero and one. Instead, it will leave it as it is because two fifty five has a special meaning. It's a white color, it's a black color, something like that. If you count to one, how your model can say what color is this? What image is that, right? But the problem with this, anything less than zero it will convert that as a zero itself. That is the problem. So they introduce something called leaky relu, L relu. Leaky relu, what it does is, it introduces a you know, um, negative slope. The same thing, it introduces something called like a you know, negative slope. So negative slope. Okay, so for example, you have zero and one here, something right? It will introduce a negative slope here. So in this case, what happens? The leaky relu values are ranging between minus infinity to plus infinity. Whereas here, in the case of relu, the values are ranging between zero to plus. Yes, uh, Swami and Sandra are correct, right? Zero to plus infinity. The range for Leakle is minus infinity plus infinity because any value it takes, right? Minus infinity, less than zero also it takes, and uh, any value above zero also it takes up. Whereas here it takes only zero. Anything less than zero, it will not 
considered. The reason is the problem with this is it will decrease the model safety to train the data properly. So that's the reason why they have introduced um, the leak relu. And then um, even the leak relu also has some problem. So parametric relu. They have something called parametric relu. <clears throat> In this case, the parametric relu, what it does is, um, see the problem with leak relu is it introduces a negative slope. But, uh, you know, this slope is not that accurate. The parametric uh, relu, what it does is, it identifies the optimal slope. It identifies the optimal slope. So that is also the reason why the parametric relu gain more popularity. Because, um, you know, with the uh, optimal slope, right? So, yeah, it, it gives the neuron the ability to choose uh, what slope is best in the negative region, right? So they can become a relu or a leaky relu with certain values of alpha. You need to remember this point also. So even, uh, see, the P relu function, parametric relu uh, we can define it something f of x equal to max of alpha x comma zero the alpha is the parametric hyperparameter okay uh, in this case the parametric um, relu it gives the neuron the ability to choose um, the optimal slope okay so if the alpha value like i said the alpha is the fiber parameter you, you know they can become relu uh, or even the parametric relu can become relu or um, leaky relu with some value of alpha in remember this okay so how do i find out uh, you know how do i let's say I, how do i enforce my model to use at any cost the parametric relu uh, but you know every every again hyper parameter tuning okay Okay, so far you understood um, the sigmoid activation function, relu activation function. Sigmoid activation function, we use it in the hidden layer. And relu also we use it in the hidden layer. And the leak here, since uh, relu has some downside with it, um, they introduce something called L, leaky relu. Even with the leaky relu, the slope was not that optimal. So to make it, to address it, they came up with something called parametric relu. Okay, with parametric relu, they can do that. The next one is the tan h function. Just, uh, you know, understand what exactly tan h function. In the case of tan h function, it takes the any value between minus 1 to plus 1. Okay, minus 1 to uh, plus 1. Okay, it's a, it's a non-linear activation function. Non-linear activation function. Non-linear activation function. Okay. Um, okay. So this is uh, you just uh, remember this much. This is more than because it takes the value anywhere between minus one to plus one. Most of the time we don't use it. Uh, okay. So hence let's not worry about this. But if they ask in the intro, they, you can tell them upfront. You know, tan h. I know what is tan h. You know, it's a non-linear activation function. They'll ask you what is non-linear activation function. S curve is a S curve. We discussed S curve, right? It is not a linear activation. It's a non-linear activation function, right? Even the case of image classification, facial recognition, everything, object detection, object right? So relu is the best one because um, it is meant for non-linear, right? Non-linear because the unstructured data it is not a linear, right? So 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 and the next one is yeah. So we understood what is tan h also now. And next, uh, you should know what is the difference in parameter and hyper parameter in neural network. So, guys, can someone, all of you, please type in the chat window. We discussed about um, the internal workings of the neural network with some sample data. I have taken some sample weights and the input values. And then we did some calculation in the last session. And good that uh, most of you have done uh, side by side with me and helped me to get the the outcome of uh, the product of all the values, right? So now tell me what is parameter and hyperparameter in the neural network? Excellent, Soumya. Weights. I told you weights. See here. This is your hidden layer neuron. This is your, sorry, this is your input layer. This is your hidden layer. This is your output layer. So every neuron is connected to every other neuron in the subsequent layer. Okay. 
Okay, here the weights, for example, 0 0.25, 0 0.35, right? So these are called weights. These weights are randomly assigned by the model. We don't have to compute this. Like in the case of linear regression model, it gives us the optimal value for the beta coefficients, right? Intercept and slope, it gives us the optimal value. It calculates the optimal value for uh, that automatically, right? So those are all called parameter. We don't have any control. Something which is done automatically, that is your parameter. Something which we want to uh, enforce. For example, activation function. Hey, use only sigmoid activation. No, 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 use ReLU activation function. So activation function is called hyperparameter because we, can, we have the control to change the value for the parameter that is called your activation function. But there are cases like in the case of uh, neural network weights, we cannot tell the algorithm, hey, change the weights and all, right? It uses its own mechanism to compute the weights for um, each synapses, right? Okay, with this, um, I'm going to conclude. Uh, in this chapter, we discussed about, as part of the activation function chapter, we discussed about what is uh, sigmoid activation function, what is um, relu activation function, what is the downside of relu activation function, what is the what is the leaky relu function, what is the downside of relu, uh, leaky relu activation function to overcome the um, downside of uh, the or shortcomings of the leaky relu. Parametric relu came into picture. With parametric relu, it can find out the or it can it can identify the optimal slope. Okay, and next we discussed about TANH uh, activation function. TANH is also a non-linear activation function. It takes the value anywhere between minus one and plus one, whereas in the case of ReLU, it takes the values between zero to infinity, whereas with leaky ReLU and parametric ReLU, it takes the value anywhere between minus infinity to plus infinity. Sigmoid function takes the values between zero and one. And um, that's all, guys.